All right. It looks like we are live. We're live? We are. Right. Hi, Nicole. Hi, David. It's finally time to drink. Oh, good afternoon. It is. Hey. And we're kind of not on East Coast time, so I mean, it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's like happy hour right now for us. <laughs> I'll take it. It works. Yeah. It's right at dinner time for me. Houston, Texas. I'm a... I'm having cocktails for dinner, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you don't normally? I do. I mean, well, you know, we work in real estate, so there we go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's much needed every day. <laughs> awesome. Happy so how, hours all the time. Yes. Oh, we got people coming on. Yes. Nice. Let's see. Where is, okay, so we got some people from Seattle. Where is everybody from? Oh, Puerto, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. British Columbia. Why well, o'clock? Right. <laughs> I, I love it. All right. So let's get started. Uh, so I'm Alex Wang. I'm the founder of uh, Rainmaker Real Estate. I've got here Nicole Lopez, CEO of True Houston, and David Olfant of Ocean Blue Real Estate in Half Moon Bay. And so super excited. We're all part of a network of side partners and we want to share with you a little bit more about what side is so if you could check out this quick little video there's only so much you can do on your own without a team without a technology brokerage like side supporting you the back office support the marketing directors everyone works to help enhance your business which is so different. This is how it should be done. This is how it could have been done and no one was doing it. They put agent first, other brokerages put themselves first. And everything that's mentioned that an agent really needs, they have it. What Side has is everything that we want. We've had people email us and ask us over and over, who are you working with? How is this happening? The entire Side crew walks a walk and talks a talk. I think we were surprised with a lot of the things that are actually offered through Side. It actually exceeded my expectations. Everything that they promised to us, every aspect of the technology, of their support behind us, they have lived up to. I was really excited when I walked into the Side office because I saw so many brilliant people. You get the best of the best. And they offer us the support, the training, the tools, a business manager, a sales manager, a real estate broker, legal support, Having the brokerage end of things being a robust engine that I can rely on, that's huge. With Side, we can give feedback to them and really say this is what we need and they'll do everything they can to build it for us. Support is a push of the button away. That is amazing. Hope everyone's excited and having some fun. We're gonna make some nice little cocktails and uh, get some insight uh, and chat about building your brand and ampli amplifying your brand. So a um, couple of housekeeping items, first of all. Uh, number one, uh, if you have any questions down there in the in the left, your right side, there's a little Q&A section. Type in your questions if you've got any questions. And if you want uh, to click on that raise that hand uh, button to raise your hand, we can invite you to ask a question that way as well. We can possibly even invite you onto the video. And uh, lastly, in the uh, handout section, there's a couple uh, recipe cards for you uh, going through the type of recipes that, uh, that we're going to be going through in terms of making our cocktails. And so uh, lastly, there's going to be a, a nice little giveaway. So if you guys uh, will be giving away a branded cocktail kit uh, based upon uh, each of your brand values. And so if you just answer a three-question survey at the end, uh, the survey link will be in the chat and you'll be able to... Uh, possibly enter yourself into getting a cocktail uh, kit branded with your values. So, all right, so let's get started. And, uh, you know, today we're making three real nice classic recipes, uh, the classic Manhattan and the refreshing Paloma. Is that how you say it? Paloma? Paloma. And the citrusy lemon drop martini. And so uh, I'm going to start off with the, with the classic Manhattan. And so I want to walk you guys through how I like to make a Manhattan. And, and then we'll go through that process. Nicole and David will, will follow follow my, my uh, follow me in doing the same thing. And then we can chit chat about uh, about branding as well uh, along the way. All right. So first things first. What do I need? Okay. So 
first thing you need is some uh, rye or bourbon. I've got Templeton rye, maple cask, recommended by a friend of mine. Uh, some good stuff, rye or bourbon. Then we got a good vermouth. And this is Antique Cola. This is one of the, my favorite vermouths. And um, kind of like building your brand, initially we're gonna talk, talk surely about foundation. Actually, I think that the good the trick to a good Manhattan is actually not in the actual rye or bourbon, but it's actually getting really good vermouth. And the next thing that I got here is some bitters. You guys got your bitters? Yeah. All right. And what else do we have? Oh yeah, and then we got some cherries. And so we get some Luzardo cherries here. Nice, like it. And then lastly, an orange orange peel or an orange. So first things first, we get started is cut a little peel out. Got the peel here. Oh, that's <laughs> a citrus in my eye. <laughs> so take that orange peel, take your glass. There you go. Yeah, just rub it all around there. It gives it a little nice little touch. All right, and now in terms of the uh, putting on some of the alcohol, so we're gonna go one and a half ounces of your favorite rye or bourbon. So, oh, what are good? I'm sorry, I forgot. I got a little little glass thing that put the put, put all the bourbon in. I forgot, I forgot the most important thing. Is put on ice. Have to focus on that. So you got ice, got my rye, one and a half ounce or so. Nice. Now, Nicole, before you shoot that, we, we have some more ingredients coming in. Oh, man. How did you know yesterday was my birthday? All I wanted to do was shoot the whiskey. <laughs> <Had to believe. laughs> so now we get your vermouth. We go about three quarter ounce of vermouth into there, or a little bit more. And then, there you go. Now we get our bitters. Put a couple dashes of bitter, two or three droplets, nothing too crazy. Oh, <laughs> all right. Now we got our bitters. And now it's time to stir the drink. Now make sure you don't want to shake it. You want to just, just stir it. I think it comes out differently when we really shake it. You just want to go nice and gently there. All right. Okay. Now we got to get our little strainer. Or your fingertip if you're in a cold. Or that <laughs> We just mixed ours right at the glass. That's what I did. Nice. All right. And then now for the garnishing is get your little cherry or two. Hey, voila. Right there. Nice. Those are big cherries. I found Bing cherries. Mmm. Mm. And just drop, tap, do, uh, drop in there right there like that. You see that little cherry juice all over the bourbon mm. all right do we get to try it cheers cheers, cheers. guys cheers so so like i was saying earlier about how the foundation of a good manhattan in my mind is is really where what type of vermouth you use so for our brand when you're building your brand your brown brand foundation each of us really have different types of brands i mean in terms of the background in terms of our different value propositions in our stories. And so I want to ask uh, David and Nicole, what do you guys, what, are, what makes your brand unique? Why don't we start with Nicole? There we go. Oh. I was going to suggest that. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So uh, we are in Houston, right? Houston is very uh, culturally diverse. Um, and we have a lot of uh, graffiti inspired culture um, and cultural uh, murals all throughout the city. So when I was developing um, 
my brand, True Houston. And uh, if you guys could pull that up for me there so some folks can uh, take a peek at it. We used a lot of uh, graffiti and things that were a little bit more urban and a little bit um, more unrefined, which is the uh, non-traditional thing to do in real estate because real estate it's very personal, um, just like graffiti culture. It's a little gritty, um, but at the end of the day, it is super fun. It's vibrant, and that's um, that's the characteristics of our team. Um, and yeah, so we are fun, gritty, outgoing, a little crazy, um, and we drink. So there's that. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Okay, we'll get that we'll get that, uh, uh, that, that uh, logo up in, the, in a second. David, how about you? So yeah, of course, uh, very different here. Half Moon Bay is a small coastal community that sits between San Francisco and Santa Cruz, right? So uh, it's people who have moved here from the city. It's people with second homes. It's also people that grew up here, right? It's a very kind of blended community of people. So it had to be a, a high level of service, a concierge level of service, but feel like local town service. Mm. And so that was the kind of the piece that I was constantly juggling. The good news is it's really authentically who I am. Um, I was born and raised in Reno and always grew up in a small town, but it always worked for very high level service industries as uh, airlines, cruise lines, uh, hotels. So I knew what it meant to offer a refined service. Um, and my business was, my background was business. So that kind of all collided and came together. Um, when we have a chance to show you visuals, I'll share my uh, 19, 68 VW bus with you. Um, I've had it for 10 years, but when I got into real estate in 2013, I wrapped it with my company brand. So there oh, is my 1960 bus. Yeah, it's got a picture of the coast on it. And then of course it's branded everywhere. Um, I started with just a picture of the coast. And then when I realized every day people were taking pictures of it, I'm like, why is it my website on my bus? And then I sent it to my CPA and said, see, look at the whole thing's a write off, right? I use it for work. Here it is. So my brand was very. I love um, was very uh, a high level of service, but with a local uh, kind of feel and quality. And those are the people who work on my team as well. Awesome. I love how I, on your website you say, uh, um, if, you, if they see the van around town somewhere, take a picture and post it on, what's it on Instagram? It's, yeah, it's on uh, Instagram. We have it on Facebook. I've got it on LinkedIn, but I drive it around town a lot. So I tell people, if you see it, take a picture with you and the bus and post it and tag us and I'll give you a $50 to your favorite restaurant in town. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I need to come find us. I could use 50 bucks. <laughs> well, then you know how to get it done. <laughs> <laughs> I know where the bus is right now. <laughs> uh, we, do have a, we do have a question from Juanita. She, she asked where the bus is. So the bus sits in my garage at the coast. It was really important to me when we bought a house, and this is my backyard. But we, um, it was really important to have a garage because we get lots of rust out here. We have a lot of fog, but it sits in my garage. I'm not giving you the address. But if you'd like to come by the office, I park it in front of the office often and you can see it there, which is right um, in the middle of uh, Main Street in downtown Half Moon Bay. We've got some requests for the bus to make it to Atlanta. So maybe you'll have to do a bus tour, David. I'll have to have a towed. I don't know about driving that thing to Atlanta, but yes, I hear you. Atlanta, I hear you. Coming. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, for, for, you know, for, I've always thought like, you know, for my business, I've always said that my three pillars that I have in, in, in my business has been a, uh, my local knowledge, my experience, and my negotiation skills. That's kind of been my my three pillars. Um, David, you mentioned on your website, you know, that you said it was like yours is finance, strategy, and emotion. So can you tell me a little bit more about like how you got to those, that core, like what, how did you get to those three numbers, those three pillars? You know, I did, it was interesting. When I first started in real estate and I was with another brand, um, kind of working for a big box brand, I just started to discover that really, those were the three things that people were asking me to be good at. Without even knowing it or saying it, they were asking me to understand the finances and the business side of it. But most people I was dealing with were also highly emotional people, right? I, I kind of have always said, if someone's moving, something has happened, right? Someone's moved right. out, someone's gotten divorced, someone's gotten married, the family has grown, the family has shrunk, whatever it is. So typically, when people are going through that transaction, we can't forget about that side of it because people are stressed or sad or happy, um, whatever it might be. So uh, I'm glad that I have a therapy background. Tell you, that's come into play. 
Um, and that's just really how I recognize what the, the foundation of my business was. And we can't ever forget about the people side of the business, which is why I love doing it. That's awesome. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Nicole, uh, I noticed also that we, we all have, it seems like we all have similar types of uh, passions for supporting nonprofits and mm -hmm. charity. That from looking at both your websites and kind of looking at some of the content I have to see online. Um, you recently got awarded a Inman Award, Innovator Award, right? Yeah, for, I'm super uh, excited. Yay. Yeah, can you tell <laughs> us more about that? Yeah, so um, I was nominated. Um, still don't know by who, but. Um, yeah, what uh, I developed. David, did you nominate me? We've just met, uh, but I'm okay. <laughs> I was almost super excited. I was going to come see the bus and everything, David. Darn it. <laughs> um, but I had built right after the closure of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, which was on uh, March 11th. Myself and a, a couple of my friends got together. And uh, after seeing the economic devastation of these vendors who are, many of them are tra traveling trade show type of folk and um, mom and pop shops don't have e-commerce website platforms set up. We developed uh, Texas Festival Vendors, which was um, a Facebook group or still is a Facebook group. We're still operating it as of today. Um, it quickly grew to over 175,000 shoppers. Um, and it was really cool. We, we developed a, a connection with Facebook and they've been kind of helping us grow and maintain it. And uh, to date, we've done over $1.5 million in sales, uh, contributing to the, uh, the small businesses that keep our communities alive, right? Because a lot of these guys, they are here in Houston, they're in Texas. Actually, we have a couple of vendors that are in California as well that were impacted by this. And um, so we've been absolutely blessed um, to be able to bless the lives of others. And um, I'm super honored to even be considered as an innovator for Inman. Um, so thank you to the Inman folk. I, I really appreciate it. And I look forward to being able to help more people in the future. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right, so uh, should we go into our next cocktail while we continue to talk about, about Brandon? Sure, sure, why not? That's me, I think, huh? David, you're gonna give us a uh, Paloma? Demonstration. I'm going to give you the Paloma demonstration, recognizing I've never made one. I always say I'm going to have business cards made that on one side it says you're welcome, and on the other side it just says I'm sorry. And then I can just look at the card and go, there. So you're <laughs> welcome, I'm sorry, but I'm going to make a Paloma. So if you are gathering your ingredients, you're going to want to get uh, I chose pink salt for the rim of the glass just because I thought it looked kind of cool, right? It looked kind of nice. I see some pink salt there. Very nice. And um, I'll walk you through it. Uh, it looks like some of us have pre-salted our glass, so if you've done that. Um, two ounces of fresh grapefruit juice. Uh, everything I watched online uh, said to use fresh grapefruit juice, if you could, rather than bottled. If one of our presenters has bottled, that's okay. Don't worry. It's going to be delicious. Spe what? Finish your Manhattan first. Then it's going to be really delicious and we can come back. So the grapefruit juice. You're going to need some lime juice as well or fresh lime. A teaspoon of sugar. So I make a simple syrup for my cocktails. Simple syrup is just an equal combination of sugar and water kind of boiled down um, and then just set aside. You can do a splash of it, but it's really easy to mix down. It's a nice way of transferring the sugar, the sweetness of the sugar into the drink if it doesn't dissolve. Um, some tequila and some club soda. So, and then we've got uh, some garnish as well. So if you would, it's typically a rocks glass. I have to tell you, um, he doesn't know, but he's sitting there over on the couch. I borrowed my husband's, um, what is this? It's in Star Wars. Oh, it's a Death Star glass. Oh, it's a Death Star glass. Look, the bottom has like the Death Star in it. So I don't oh, know. Oh, that's cool. Anyway, when you uh, pour drinks over it. Oh, my husband's glass too. It says Grew. Um, it, was, it used to say Groom, but it was our wedding glasses. Now it just says Grew. <laughs> So that is kind of Star Wars now. <laughs> yes. Take your glass. If you will, just go ahead and take um, your citrus, and you can just go right around the rim, dip it into the salt, set it aside. And then we're going to start with um, the juices and the sugars. If you're using sugar, this is your opportunity to make sure it gets dissolved. If you're using a simple syrup, super easy. So go ahead and take your grapefruit juice. It's two ounces. Of course, because I have a lot of OCD, I've got mine pre-measured right here, but just two ounces of fresh grapefruit juice. 
If you're gonna juice it fresh, make sure that you strain it. You can pour it into a pre-glass and strain later, or you can pour it right into your glass right now. All right, so your two ounces of grapefruit juice, uh, your tablespoon of fresh lime. Traditionally, it would be great to use fresh lime if you can. If not, the pre-mixed uh, lime that you have is also good, but I just take some fresh lime and I squeeze it right into the glass. It calls for uh, a teaspoon, but you can kind of measure uh, and really just address this to your taste. So fresh lime right in the glass. And then uh, sugar. So again, I made simple syrup, which is around here somewhere. Ah, it's here. So simple syrup, again, is just equal parts of sugar and water kind of rendered down. You could just do a splash of the simple syrup or do a teaspoon of sugar. Okay, so if you're using sugar, you got to stir that. You have to stir it around the Death Star. Okay, so once you're sure that your sugar is dissolved, right, because you've stirred it or you used your simple syrup, we're going to go on to the next step, which is about tequila. Tequila. Pour in 14 ounces of tequila. Oh, wait. Whoa! Speaking language. <laughs> Sorry. Pour in two ounces of tequila or to taste. Oh. Oh. We just need to taste. So two ounces of tequila. We're going to pour that in. Why do I think this is the drink I'm going to finish? Mm -hmm. I still have to show property and hand off keys tonight. So, oh my goodness. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go back to our ice bucket. We're going to just add a little bit of ice in there. We're just enough to chill the drink to your taste. Nice. And then the last thing right over the ice is going to be the club soda. So it's two ounces of club soda. Open the bottle now so it can explode all over your counter. Pour that two ounces of club soda in. Your rocks glass is probably close to being full right now. And then we're going to take our garnish. We're going to garnish with a grapefruit slice. So I just happened to preset mine here. I took a couple slices, put it on a little stir rod. And then if you yeah. want to, you can just dip it right in. It'll do two things. It's going to stir your beverage, and it's going to get some of the oils from the grapefruit into the drink as well. And again, it's my first time, but I'm looking down, and I think that's all the ingredients. So I don't know. That's the Paloma. The Paloma from Half Moon Bay. Cheers. Awesome. Cheers. Can I have some more club soda? Mm, that's good. That's really good. Oh, my Lord in heaven. See, if this was blue, this would be the drink of ocean blue. A little, little blue dye there. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, a, bit, a big aspect of uh, developing the brand is our, uh, is our uh, like, personalities, right? Our brand personality. I could maybe, probably be safe to say that the three of us have different personalities, right? And so, <laughs> how did you guys define your own brand personality? And uh, I'd love to get, get if we can, uh, we have to see see if we can get the uh, your logo up there, Nicole, because I think it's probably part of part of uh, your personality as well. But did that develop over time? Were you? I mean, I know I'm a little bit embarrassed about my my first brand when I first started, but uh, we may start with you, Nicole, and you share a little bit more. Yeah. So this was something that. Um, developed with me over time. So before I joined Side, I was formally known as the PR group, right? Because every great house needs an even better PR agent, right? Um, and that's essentially what we do. But um, when I came to Side, I wanted something that was going to be, um, that would transcend and, and wouldn't necessarily sound like a team, right? Like it would sound uh, like a brand that people could get behind, right? And you see the true Houston shirts up there. Um, and that was really important for me was creating a brand that my agents would be proud to wear um, mm -hmm. and my agents would be proud to represent. And so that was the focus behind True Houston. And I don't know if you can see it in the logo. If you get really close, um, you'll see these little tiny lines in the words true in Houston. And those are actually fingerprints. So we got really um, integral when we when we created this because I wanted it to be 
um, part of our identity, right? It's so much of our identity that it's, it's the fingerprint of who we are, right? And um, it's, it's fun, it's vibrant, it's funky. When you look at the agents on my team, it's, it kind of goes with the effervescence, right? Like we're all female, uh, we are all powerful. I saw some women up hashtags in there um, and they are amazing. And, the, um, and just the support that we've had from side since joining and the uh, ability to really rebrand ourselves in a way that was a part of our identity and who we were and that represented us. And it didn't necessarily have to represent a, um, anyone else, but us has been such a joy. And it's been such a relief too, to be able to have that and know that my agents can, you know, if they decide they want to branch off later, they can have, they don't have to have true Houston. They could have another subset of, of our marketplace, like true Cypress or true Katie or true right. the Woodlands. Um, and so that is, that is who we are right there, that they're all a bunch of beautiful ladies. That's great. And it sounds like it evolved over time too. It wasn't instantly just boom, you, you, yeah. you know, over the your course of your career. <laughs> Right. Yeah. I mean, we looked at what was identi what the Houston identity was, right? And it was, it was bright. It was colorful. It was effervescent. It was real. It was raw. Um, and that transcended into our brand. Awesome. Great. Yeah. And David, how about, how about you? Your brand personality. You know, I think of probably the first time that um, I'd hired a new buyer's agent, we were I think it was her very first open house and she was kind of having a small panic uh, because I had um, embroidered logo shirts made for us, right? The brand was on a nice white shirt and she was panicking about what pants to wear and what shoes, ah, what shoes because she had a tattoo on her foot and she was panicked that people were gonna see the tattoo and but she wanted to wear these shoes oh. that were open. And I said, like, put the panic away because you're probably wearing jeans. Like let's wear jeans with the white shirt. And so what, you have a tattoo. Uh, half of the world has a tattoo and we're a fresher, brighter, kind of more natural, authentic brand versus trying to cover up who we are. So mm -hmm. I think when we start to cover up all those parts of ourselves, we're no longer authentic as people. And we're certainly not authentic to the brand that we're working for. And I kind of always question myself, if I have to, I mean, listen, in the first 15 minutes, I tell you I'm using my husband's Star Wars class, right? But if I have to start to pack away, <laughs> All those parts of me that are authentic, but I don't feel like I can show people, then I'm not, then I'm on the wrong path, right? So I have been attracting people who are authentic about themselves, and I'm like, show your tattoo at the open house. It doesn't matter to me. Like, that's who we are. That's what I love. Did you and, guys? I was, I was uh, sorry. I was, I was saying, did you guys have that authenticity about yourself from the very beginning of your career? Because I feel like for me. In the beginning of my career, I'm trying to be act as if. I'm trying to be like, you know, wear my suit and tie, button up every single day into the office. I'm going to be the next, before Million Dollars was on TV, but I was going to be the next MDL agent. And then right. I kind of, over time, kind of realized, oh, well, you know what? This is not really truly me, but it took me some time. But I mean, did, how about you guys? Nicole? I mean, it, it has taken a lot of time. I've been in the industry now for 10 years. I mean, believe it or not, I know you guys, even though I turned 34 yesterday, <laughs> I look 12, no, I'm kidding. Um, but I've, it's been something that has evolved over time, right? It's not something, especially when you're talking about your branding, it's nothing that can pop up instantly, right? And it evolves with you as you grow as a person, as you grow as an agent, as you grow as a leader in, in your community and, and as a as a real estate agent and broker. So um, being yourself and not being afraid to be yourself, that was one of the biggest challenges to overcome for for me and for the team was was really being okay with the identity that you have. Mm -hmm. Right. And not trying to mold fit into somebody else's mold. Um, right. In the past, I had been very candid about being a square peg in a round hole. And now I get to be the round peg in the round hole. Like it fits, it vibes, it meshes. And, um, and it's just, it's awesome. Awesome. Uh, can we pull up a uh, ocean blues uh, logo? Also, I want to kind of look at uh, David's logo too and see how that, how David, how did you go through that design process to get to where you came up with the, uh, with ocean blue? You know, it makes me think too, um, 
when you were talking about putting on a suit. So I do wear a coat and tie to my listing appointment. No offense. No offense. No, 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 no. No, I think it's for me, it's really interesting because I always wear a coat and tie to listing appointments because I'm conveying that I am the best and smartest business person to sell their home. So it's funny, we laugh. I have two cars. I have a Range Rover that I take to listing appointments and I have a VW bus that I take to open houses, right? Because it's, it's I have two different uh, things I'm trying to accomplish. So I do wear a suit and tie there. When I go to open houses, I park this bus out front. But when I was thinking about my brand, um, and I've only been open as Ocean Blue for just coming up on a year. So I'm pretty new. And I've only been in real estate for six years. So the, you know it's all still relatively new. But I started thinking about words that were important to me. And I tried to take off the boundary of why, right? So I kept a car, book in my car. And if a word came to my mind, I wrote it down. And some days it was coffee. And some days it was laundry. And some days it was ocean. And like a, I think I had 350 words. So then I went and clumped the words together that were kind of in similar categories. And I picked my top category and it was all about the earth and the sand and where we live and the ocean. Um, I clumped that down a little bit more. And this was even before my branding meeting with the side folks. So you could imagine by the time I got there, I'd already been through so much, but, yeah. and I came down literally to the words ocean and to the words blue and blue ocean sounded too typical. I'm not typical. Right. So I just switched the order and we came I love up with it. I love it. I love it too. Yeah. It's so fitting for half moon day. Yeah. Well, and again, it's it's that it's that shirt and tie on top and the jeans on the bottom because I've got the local surfers right. and I've got the, all the dot com people who are looking for a beach house. You know, right. that's great. Yeah, I, I was I was fortunate that I actually had a company before. It was called Rainmaker Property, so I actually had a logo before back in two thousand and seven that I developed, and um, you can see uh, oh, the old logo doesn't come out too well there. Uh, but it was not your new one better. <laughs> wow, how'd you get your business done with that top logo? <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Let me see. I, I don't think I have it with, <laughs> but it said Rainmaker Properties and it had this little green leaf because I, I wanted I wanted Rainmaker to be something like obviously Rainmaker is a top sales guy, right? Of a company. I thought you know yeah I'm I want to be a Rainmaker and I also want to create and build Rainmakers through uh through uh through my uh my process in selling um but then at some point uh when i when we went to go to design the logo they said you know what properties is kind of antiquated you know let's not use the word properties and they said you know why don't you just go to make a real estate i was like oh they're oh, okay that's a little bit better <laughs> there it is. much better yeah. so they said oh, i love to make a real estate and you know when i when i when i got it, i was like oh my gosh this is it and I, I did i barely even went through the design process just so i go that's it let's go and so I, I was really uh, fortunate, but I know that it takes a lot of time because you're trying to figure out what, what your uh, what your personality is and what you believe in your core values and foundation, kind of going from there. Uh, but that's really cool to hear how each of us have gone through a, kind of our design of our uh, of our pers brand personality. And we did have a question from uh, Jolene. She said that she's starting her third year in real estate and she's already gone through two logos. Internally, what did you guys feel when you found the right one? Like, what did that feel like for you? Uh, good question. You guys go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, um, you know so, what I would add? I, I think people have to pick a brand because it's now attached to you and you have to stick with it. So if mm -hmm. you're going through your fifth year in real estate and you're on your third logo, it's time to stop logos and it's time to focus on something else. So um, I I think probably four years ago, I'd been in real estate for three years. I sold a house and I heard someone say to the client, how did you meet David? And she said, oh, we've been following him for 10 years online. I thought, well, that's really interesting because I've only been in business for three. But it was about picking that logo and sticking with it uh, and just not changing. Find something you love and don't change it. I would say stick with it no matter what. But until you change brands and come decide, and then we've got you covered. Then we'll change your logo. <laughs> And then uh, Kenny, uh, fast agent Kenny Trong, uh, who's a, a good friend of mine, he said, Alex is like the Lil Wayne of real estate. So <laughs> well, 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 what it's worth. Well, well, <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Are you guys ready to get started on the lemon drop? Yeah, yes. let's do it. Let's yeah. do it. Sweet. All right. So that is going to be a vodka based uh, drink. 
and uh, it will be served shaken. So I hope you guys have your shakers. Et voila. Shake it up, shake it up. Okay, so um, I really love this vodka. It's Dripping Springs Vodka. It is um, distilled right here in Texas. Um, and a great thing about this distillery is when uh, COVID crisis happened, they were the first distillery in Texas to kind of stop everything that they were doing, along with Tito's Vodka. Nothing wrong with Tito's, but I do love Dripping Springs. There you go. There's some, Texas, some other Texas vodka. He's got Tito's. Um, I've got Mexican Bay Vodka, too, which is funny. We all have local vodkas. Nice. Oh, look at that. I love it. So, hey, babe, what's my recipe? Two ounces of vodka. And you're going to pour this into your shaker glass. Two ounces. Got it. Two ounces. All right. And Juanita asked if we were purposefully trying to get messed up. <laughs> I mean, it's a day in real estate. No, I'm kidding. But also, there are some fabulous mocktails that you can make. There's um, like Paloma as a mocktail would be delicious. Like that grapefruit juice and club soda and some lemon juice. All right. I don't need any more of that. I was about to pour some more. Um, all right. So you can do, um, I have this simple syrup here. Um, now, it, the recipe calls for one ounce of simple syrup. However, I like to do a little bit less than that because I do like my lemon drop martini lit, like not quite tasting like candy. So um, I'm a Texas girl. I like to taste my alcohol in my drinks. So I'm going to go in with about a half an ounce of simple syrup. Okay. All right. Now we need the lemon juice. And we're going to do two ounces of lemon juice. So I cheated, or about one whole lemon. You can do either or. Um, I cheated a little bit today, you guys. I have my organic lemon juice in a squeezy thing. <laughs> I know, don't kill me. All right, so you can pour two ounces of lemon juice right in there. Look at how easy that is, you guys. Squeezy, squeezy, squeezy. It's like TV magic. Try this though. Aw, somebody said yuck. Oh. Yuck. <laughs> it's Over okay. Lemon? My oh. organic lemon juice is just fine. All right. So while we've got that sitting just for a second, you're going to want to grab your martini glass. Mm. And I should have prepped this before. Although you guys can see how my brain works. It goes forwards and then also backwards. Um, so you're going to take your martini glass or whatever glass you're pouring it into. I did rim it with sugar, so I dropped it in a little bit of lemon juice all the way around and then ran it through some sugar. All right. Just like that. Very nicely done, David. That is a beautiful, awesome. of course, the fire truck is running by my house right now. Nicole, your ride's there. You better go. <laughs> all right. So. You've got your ice in here. You've got your lemon juice. Put a scoop of ice in there just to shake it up because we're doing it shaken. Make sure you get your ice in there. All right. All right, you guys ready? Ready. ready. Okay. We're it up. All right, let's go. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, that was a mess. <laughs> You can take it more than that if you want it more icy, but Please, wow. all right, we're gonna pour Ooh, that yeah. right yeah. into the pot. Uh, strain it. Okay, and then to finish the beautiful lemon drop martini off, I have some lemon peel here, and I'm just gonna twist this up, right? Twist it up and get those, and you can like squish it a little bit. I like to squish mine just a little bit because it gets those lemon, uh, lemon oils out. And then we drop it right in and you have your lemon drop martini. Et voila. Et voila. Et voila. Et voila. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. <laughs> just the third drink in 45 minutes. <laughs> mm. Actually, it's pretty good. Oh my God, it's better than pretty good. It's really good. Yay! 
Oh, you did so good. It's only because you guys gave me the most simple drink. <laughs> <laughs> Delicious, I love it. How it turned out half okay. Um, all right. Um, any Kathleen asked us um, any suggestions on how to brand yourself without having to create a new logo. It's a fun little question. Mm. Well, I don't. I mean, I don't think you necessarily have to have a logo. But at least if you're going to just, I mean, your name is your name, right? So that essentially is going to be your brand. And so mm -hmm. if you don't want to spend the money on a logo or a time on a logo, then at least get, keep at least the same typeface or the same font of your name when you, when you're, when you're on your, in your marketing. What I can't stand is, and I'm a little anal retentive, but I can't stand is different fonts everywhere for what an ad has all sorts of different fonts that drives me nuts. Um, I do also want to say uh, to earlier, how we talking about getting logos is that, that um, I mean, this logo is, it's, it's a pretty, I mean, it's a pretty intense process because this brand is your personal brand that you're building. And it's a brand that you're gonna be using and you'll be touching for years and years and years and years. So it shouldn't be taken lightly. You should probably save up some money to spend on it or some time to spend on it if you don't join side, right? Uh, but you really have to, I mean, it, it, you gotta take your time because if I, have, if I see another logo that has a, uh, a house with a window frame in it, I'm going to, Go crazy, okay? Cool. <laughs> just it's not it's not oh, the yeah. not the brand that you want to have. You want to have a brand that's that's based upon more your personality and laying the foundations of what you what you built on it. Absolutely. Um, I just had this conversation with my in laws yesterday, actually, about the logo with the house in it as part of their name. Um, and I told them I was like, you guys, because they're doing a, a whole branding logo revamp. And I was like, you guys, no, no, like. Maybe for the customer world, it's not overdone, but in the realtor world, it is no, no offense to anybody who has that as their logo, yes. but it's just it's bare, no offense. If you've got the houses with the great, but sorry, <laughs> um, but um, just think outside the box, be creative. Don't be afraid to be a little funky. Don't be afraid to add color. And I think, or simplify it like you did, Alex. Um, because that logo that you have now is really going to stand the test of time. It's simple and it's seamless and it's effortless. And it really, um, I think it says a lot about the way that you guys handle your transactions. You know, you try to make it as effortless and as seamless as possible. So I love it. Yeah. Awesome. You know, so, I, I would only add things like that too, that we see a lot, right. That are commonplace. Um, a client sometimes has trouble differentiating you from your competition if you both have a similar look mm -hmm. and feel. Right? So I got really lucky. I didn't realize it in high school, but I got really lucky to have a round bald head, right? <laughs> in high school, I was so happy about it. Now I'm really happy about it because that is how people recognize me. I, not out of, from a not from an egotistical perspective, but I always had my picture in all of my branding because it was this round bald head, right? So. I don't know, I got lucky with it, it was easy, but if you don't have a round bald head, then just think about authentically who you are and what's gonna stand the test of time to Nicole's point. That's Absolutely. Awesome. awesome, so so we got a foundation, uh, we got a bit foundation, and then we've got our, our kind of core values and kind of what our personality is, right? And so now we gotta amplify that brand, right? We gotta share it with the world. We gotta, you know, you know don't, don't hide it, you know, let it shine. So what channels do you guys use mm -hmm. to amplify your brand? Awesome. So um, I use all social media channels. Um, if you guys know me, I also recently got on TikTok. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. I'm, I'm now the, the dancing, cool Gen Z TikTok realtor, too. Um, no, but um, the social media, uh, of course, Facebook, Instagram, um, all of the usual channels. LinkedIn is super powerful right now for engaging with people in your business. Um, not only that, though, when you talk about amplifying, we are actually planning our first graffiti mural here in Houston, which will be across from our office. And so we have this massive wall, which is going to be decked out. It's not even on our office. It's across the street. Like, they're letting us do it. I have no idea why. Um, but we're decking so it out. In graffiti um, and in Houston and I think in a lot of places too it's it's very like it's fun to take your family photos and in, in, in front of something that's vibrant fun colorful and 
and uh, it's a social media piece. And so we are planning that for the very near future. That's great. That's great. At, at the at Side HQ in San Francisco, I was walking with uh, with Guy, and he was showing it. He's, they've got a black and white like cartoonish kind of uh, a graffiti on the on the on the exit door, and just funny mm -hmm. how. When you spend money to graffiti a, a wall beautifully, that people are not going to tag it. People aren't going to put mm -hmm. other graffiti on top of that. And that's just, I mean, mm -hmm. I think that's, that's, that's so awesome. You know, to add to that, the thing that, again, if you think about like a tie on the top and jeans on the bottom, the thing that I was kind of uh, challenged with because we live in a small but expensive community is how I reach most people, right? So, um, I had to do print stuff. I have to go, I have to have the inside cover of the monthly Half Moon Bay magazine. I have to be in the newspaper. Um, I have to do high school programs and banners in the gymnasium. I have to do all that kind of stuff because we're a small community and people see that. But I also, mm -hmm. on the flip side, I have to do all that social media stuff. So I started paying attention to where my business was coming from. And I recognized for me, uh, I have a love-hate relationship with it, but it was Yelp. Um, it's certainly Facebook, it's certainly LinkedIn, and it's Instagram. That's really kind of where we spend our energy from a social media perspective. But my biggest cost is print. Mm -hmm. It's shocking to me, but I spend a lot of money in print advertising. And I don't think in a bigger community in Houston, you might not be able to do that. It's so big. Yeah. But in Little Hatton Bay, right, I get value for my money because people think they've been following me for 10 years and I've been in the business for free. <laughs> That's awesome. But I think it was from the print stuff, so. though. I think, again, yeah. you got to figure out where you are and where your people are and do that. Yeah, for my business, I, I was pretty widespread in terms of location area. And then as I slowly started honing into to a more specific area of location, I could totally see why just the print marketing works out even so much more. Mm -hmm. Because they look in the local newspaper, there you are. They look at the school event, there you are. And just kind of building that kind of focus and specialty in that one, one little area. Yeah, for sure. No. So we've got a couple of questions in the QA. Okay. Um, Kyle Kelly asks, do any of you have partners? Have you ever had to break up with a partner or top producing agent because they weren't representing the brand or culture that you were trying to build? Mm -hmm. so, uh, I think my internet connection just got bad. I <laughs> <laughs> well, I, think, <laughs> I think you laugh because there's so much truth. Great question. Really great question. Um, I'll, 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 I'll have to say that, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I've always been um, fortunate to be that top producer and people would want to join my team and kind of come alongside. Um, but as the team started to grow larger, sometimes it was harder for me to keep the same type of uh, consistency um, that I was used to for myself. And so I had to either try to micromanage more or try to let go. And so um, I've built and disbanded probably four or five teams up at this point. Um, and it's always a learning experience every single time. Uh, this time uh, with Finding Rainmaker, yeah, I just uh, grabbed uh, uh, my business partner, uh, Nancy Reynolds, and she came alongside with me, obviously with my wife and our support team. And then we just started, let's just start small and kind of grow from there. And then, you know, we will, we haven't really got any recruiting. It's just pretty much, I think we'll attract the right people that way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, that's a huge, that's a good question because it's really difficult. That's why we, we both, we all three of us were, 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 uh, were, were laughing. Um, so with me, I, I definitely went through that um, in early January of this year. So I was formerly with another brokerage and when I left and went to side, um, I expressed the vision for what we were building and it didn't really jive with some of the existing team members that I had. And so it was really unfortunate that we had to do a little bit of a, of a purge and then um, build the team back up. So when I had joined the previous brokerage I was with, I had nine agents. And when I joined Side, I had three. And now we are back up to nine. Um, because it was important for me to have people around me who were invested in what we were building together. Um, and I mean it when I say that my team is my family. Um, and they are. And they share the same core values and, and especially with work. Um, and that has been, that's been key. So yes, we've definitely had to do um, the purge and the let go and the rebuild 
Um, and side has been phenomenal with helping with that. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the only thing I would add is that when I worked for corporate America, I always told people that worked for me that if you have to fire somebody and they're surprised by it, then shame on you, right? Mm -hmm. They should see it or feel it coming. So mm -hmm. I think that culture is a really big deal. And if you as a business owner have determined what that culture looks and feels like, and you're not feeling it with that person, right. I will bet you money, that person is not feeling it with you. So there might be a relief just because it's not a fit, right? And just like, you know, I'm not the right listing agent or buyer's agent for a lot of people, it might not be the right fit for that person. So I think you just have an honest, heart to heart conversation. They might, there might be some relief there. That might be the interesting thing. That might actually be relieved that you brought it up. Yeah. Yeah. Another one that we've gotten is, have any of you guys gone through the trademark process for your logos? Mm. I, no. my old one, you saw the old Raymaker Properties logo actually had SM on the side of it. And I had, I had gone through the process of trademarking. It actually, it was called the service mark. And mm -hmm. I spent um, a lot of money and, um, and uh, Rainmaker is pretty uh, common name, and there's actually some some real estate uh, uh, software out there. Uh, but it, I think it was challenging to 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 find. Um, you know, like my answer is yes, I did that time, and this time uh, I, I I did not. So I did. I've done a trademark not for the logo, but for the name itself for True. Um, and actually, that just got approved like two weeks ago. <laughs> so wow. Nice. Happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah, happy birthday. I got true Houston together, or just true? true? Yeah. True Houston. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so next is true real estate. Um, having that like trademark, and then we can kind of branch out and go from there. Was it was it difficult? No. Um, so I went the easy way out and I paid a little bit more money and I went through legal zoom. And all I had to do was sign the documents. They sent everything in for me. I think for the, the trademark itself, it was about $800 to do the expedited service because I wanted to have everything set up appropriately when I launched the brand with site, right? So I had to have the LLC done. I wanted to go ahead and do the trademark. Um, and so in total, I think that process for me was about $1,500 to set up the LLC and do the trademarking process. Um, uh, but it was really easy not to have to, it was nice for me not to have to deal with the USPTO, um, right. to ensure that that would be expedited through the process. And, um, it was, it was super simple. Awesome. Yeah. I haven't done it. I'm a big no. Mm hmm so if the person asking, if you're asking because you love mine, I'm doing it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> We've given David a couple of things to add to his list to do tomorrow. <laughs> so, any other uh, uh, final thoughts or any Q and A's or questions that we can answer or any final thoughts uh, that you guys have in terms of, uh, you know, just building, building your brand. Sorry, I was typing in the chat asking anybody if they had any further questions for us. Um, I really think authenticity is key. Um, and knowing who you are, knowing who, you're, who you want to be, not necessarily who you want to be, but knowing who you are. Um, and then taking who you want to be and molding that into it, right? Because the whole part about branding is really moving forward with who you are. Um, let's see, Juanita asked about leads. I don't know if you guys want to talk about that. Oh boy. So I made a <laughs> I made a business decision long ago to always pay referrals and never pay for leads. So um, it just hasn't netted out in our small marketplace. It just doesn't work. Ah. Yeah. Look at that. The results of the cocktail question. What kind of if you if your brand was a cocktail, what would it be? Hmm. Ooh, an elegant dry uh, martini. Oh, interesting. Well, I'm gonna have to go back. I have to go back to the cocktail <laughs> I made that's another recipe because it was sweet and tart. So you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. There you go. I'll take the lemon drop because, well, what I was going to say isn't appropriate. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys take that. Um, let's Alex, see. what about you? What Alex's drink? It was Alex. a Manhattan. No, but what's the cocktail you and your brand would be? Oh, I, I would be a Manhattan for sure. 
Um, okay. it it's an easy cop out answer, but it would be a it wouldn't be it'd be timeless Manhattan, not a timeless old fashioned. But I think at, at some point it's going to convert to timeless old fashioned. The rain makes wow. the old fashioned market. Yeah. We just had somebody join us from Australia. Michelle, what time is it in Australia? Time for a drink. <laughs> happy hour in Australia. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, um, any book suggestions? We got that from Baron Brown. Hmm. Oh, um, you know, I know a lot of people, I think um, Gary Keller wrote a really good book, right? I haven't read it. I think it's, uh, the, is it The Million Dollar Realtor? Um, I know that everybody at Keller Williams reads it. I have not read it, but I've always heard really good things about it as far as how to kind of manage uh, your business and thinking about your brand as a business and not just kind of a hobby. Mm -hmm. So I might suggest that, but I haven't read it. Disclaimer. So I don't know. I'm I'm halfway, I'm halfway through a book called uh, The Way to Love. It's these meditations, last meditations of uh, Anthony DeMello. Uh, strongly recommend it. It's just kind of these little short little meditations in terms of uh, um, just looking at life a little bit differently. And, uh, and a, a VC that I listened to his podcast around locally here recommended it. And so, um, yeah, it's a short read and uh, pretty pretty uh, pretty good stuff. Awesome. Um, I had. My helper, my husband, <laughs> he went and grabbed this book from my office. It's called Rhinoceros Success. Uh, it is by Scott Alexander, and it has a foreword by Dave Ramsey. And this is a super easy, quick read. Um, but it just talks about how, like, rhinoceroses don't, um, well, number one, they don't give a crap about anything but their own success. And number two, um, they always charge forward, right? Like, you never see a rhinoceros was charging backwards or, or inching backwards or always charging forward. And um, this is actually one of my favorite excerpts from the book. So if you guys don't mind, we're going to have story time as well as cocktail time. Um, it says, choose to be audacious. Have an audacity attack every day. Success is audacious. Be bold and go after it. Develop your audacity skills. Do things that take nerve. Don't be obnoxious or make a jackass out of yourself, but do everything necessary to reach your goals. Every goal, every dream, every great pro uh, project requires some audacity. If success were easy, if it did not involve some risk of danger or failing, there would be no un there would be no unsuccessful cow, sheep, or sloths. Su success takes nerve. Rhinoceroses have that nerve. You are daring enough to ch charge down your dreams. Be aggressive, not in a violent manner, but be aggressive in your driving forceful energy to get whatever you are after. Aggressive, audacious, charging rhinoceroses succeed. No one is going to argue with you. Charge. So I love it. That is one of my favorites right now. It's just like a quick, like get your butt going um, type of book. So I've got a great logo for somebody. Rhino, rhino real estate. Rhino real estate. Right. That sounds like a new side partner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, Nicole, David, uh, thank you guys so much. And everybody online, um, just thank you. I, I really enjoyed this. I, it was a lot of fun. It was fun. Thanks for uh, asking us to be here. Had a great time. Yes, thank you so much. And everybody, please don't forget down below, answer the three question survey. If you're an answer, a chance to win a cocktail kit. And if you guys have got any other questions, uh, you can email us at community at sideinc.com. And this is my drink. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Good luck, everybody.